Is it one? No, it's two. Sad by sad, I don't have no clue. I'm talking the hardest, shedding out gigs. Cappy is the name takes out of the blue. CM is the one with sense. Hence, you can't just sit on the fence. Come true the foolishness, just look at the gaffer and sit on the bench. When you talk about wins, we got that. Time to settle this thing with a chop back. Aim top corner, roll top scorers. We spread the play that floor up. Out in the field, United twins are the next of kings. Question debate is a show that brings in a one feet one trying to see who wins. And UFC. Leicester City you know Manchester United won. We got a crucial away win. Eric Ten Hag getting three wins in a row in the Premier League. It's crucial after that start that we had. Lost to Brighton, lost to Brentford. Embarrassing losses at that. It is important that these last three games have happened because the pressure on Eric Ten Hag on that team would have been unbearable. And we know what happens when pressure you know it hits this manchester united team this current crop yeah it's it's, it's not very good so it's important that we've What's been able to get these three games it's not going to be a long review today because obviously we got arsenal to look forward to on sunday long story short it, it wasn't the best leicester side leicester have not been in a good position at all whether you want to talk about the transfer window and um, before the game I, I listened to a, a little interview they did on bt with brendan rogers pre-match just on the touchline he was basically saying the club they don't have the, the funds and, and the finances at this moment of time to invest like all of the I, I wouldn't say top six but it's literally probably top eight teams are investing even and then you're seeing teams promoted like Nottingham Forest getting 21 players in Fulham getting signings and 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 so forth so is that's the current situation for Leicester and right now there's not a lot of confidence there's not a lot of optimism within the club I, I think it will turn around eventually for them at this moment of time they're gonna have to find a way whether it be by getting a result or just digging deep they're gonna have to find a way to turn things around before it's too late as for Manchester United I was impressed in this game now obviously like I said, it wasn't the strongest Leicester team, but you have to deal with what's in front of you. And Manchester United, they looked a lot more organised today. I thought their passing was a lot better, a lot more accurate. With that being said, the intensity of the press from Leicester wasn't 100%. But what we're going to definitely be seeing against Arsenal, so that will be another test within itself. But we were more organised, defensively solid as we have been for the past few games. So, you know, Martinez, Varane striking up a nice partnership. Diogo Delo looking good on the right side. And Malassia looking good on the left side. Now we just need the competition to keep them going all season. And hopefully the likes of Wan-Bissaka, because he is going to have a role at some point. And Luke Shaw are going to up their game because that is what we need. Competition Have in to. places so that the whole team, they strike up a healthy relationship with each other to make sure that they earn or retain their starting position. Up front, my gripes with Marcus Rashford up front, he's just not a natural up there. So a lot of the time he is gonna be a little isolated up front because he just doesn't have the, the characteristics and the skill set of a classic number nine, the movement in the box, the hold up play, the link up play to bring other people in there. It's just not his game. He needs to be mm. facing the goal, play a ball over the top or through ball to him and let him run and chase that ball and finish it like you, what he did against Liverpool in that counter-attacking situation. And up front, we weren't able to create many of those chances for him today or against Southampton. So hopefully we can make a change there, maybe whether it's Ronaldo coming into the team or Anthony Martial coming back from injury. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Watch this space. For Jaden Sancho looked very bright today in moments. I still think his activity as a whole in the game could be better. His engagement sometimes drops off a little bit in game. So that could be better. Anthony Alanga outright. You know, he, he puts in a shift. I, I mean, personally, he, he's not a guy that's ready for first team week in, week out football at a club like Manchester United. If you're holding his standards up to a certain point, I, I would definitely love to see him, you know, get a loan deal really 
earn his stripes develop as a player he could even develop here let's be real now he's in this team now he's established himself he could even learn here under eric ten Hag and the coaching stuff so we shall see anthony could be coming in on on sunday so that's an interesting thing there he was watching from home today casemiro came on he solidified that midfield in the second half when your know, legs are getting tired it was crucial that eric ten Hag brought on that extra midfielder to make sure that leicester didn't have an abundance of space to work with in that middle of the park as they did dominate possession in that second half and we were kind of limited to that counter-attacking side which is something we'll probably want to see want to move far further and further away from as the time goes by and as this team develops as a whole under Eric Ten Hag and, and this system. But overall, it was a good, a good enough performance to see the win. Christian Eriksen was mentioning how they need to do better in creating chances and killing off the game earlier so that pressure is not on the players to protect that one goal lead because it's, it's not good enough. In certain situations against certain teams, that one goal lead turns into 1-1 one, one, and all of a sudden heads are down again. So I agree 100% on that. Good performance onto Arsenal. But let's see. That's going to be a, a big test. Probably our biggest test of the season so far. So I'm yeah. gonna be, it's going to be interesting to see what comes of that. I do agree with a lot of the things that CM said. Big up to everybody. By the way, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to CM22ENT. Not just over here, but follow CM22ENT over on Twitch where you can catch the Stay United Watch Along. Next one on Sunday for the Arsenal game. But also gaming streams with CM, NBA chiller funds with CM, wrestling chiller funds as well. Or Clash of the Castle. Uh, well, today that's when the video is dropping on saturday so look out for that one later in the day but i wanted to touch on the end of the transfer window because on thursday transfer window shut closed and look from face value we can look at the people we got in malasia martinez casemiro anthony Dubravka coming in as well. There's something in the back of my mind of a feeling of disappointment with this transfer window because at the start, a lot of us fans gave the likes of John Myrtle, Rich and Arnold an opportunity to prove us wrong because in the back of the head, we're looking at them. These are guys that are within the club. They lack the experience to really come into a situation that we're in at the start of a rebuild and lead this whole negotiation department, the transfer department as a whole. And to be honest, I think they've proven us right in the worst possible way. The way they've negotiated and dealt with transfers over this whole window oh. has been an absolute disgrace. You look at the Frankie de Jong situation, how many months we spent time on him, really, after one, one a month really, but maybe what two months at most. You look at that situation and say, all right, this guy, he's playing games with a Barcelona playing games. He ain't coming to Manchester United. So guess what? You take out your sheet, you look at all of the other options that you can look at. Even in that situation of negotiating with Frankie, you've got to keep in contact with those other options to make sure that, yo, just in case anything happens, we are interested. Exactly. You look at the Anthony situation, glad to have him in, but if we did the deal earlier and spent the peas earlier, we could have got him for much less and possibly could have opened up a, an opportunity to get maybe another midfielder and maybe a, a, a re replacement right back. You know, so many other options, maybe a backup striker that we need with an injury pro Martial and a Cristiano Ronaldo. We don't know what kind of Ronaldo we're going to get this season so we'll see from that the sale of james garner for nine million without even having a chance to prove himself in this first team setup a disgrace in my opinion especially with the price a lot of these young players are going for it's just there's no excuse for that and the sales as a whole i mean andreas Pereira, not many sales outgoings the free agents that's one thing because we've allowed their contracts to run down we can't make money from them but when it comes to getting players that needed to go out we didn't do that a lot in this window and yes we got players in that will improve us now and and hopefully for the future some of them at least but the way we operated 
is is not to be smiled upon it's to be frowned upon in fact because if that kind of stuff you may look at it and say oh this window is good why are you complaining but it's about looking at all of the windows down the line and what's going to be happening in the future if the same thing continues to happen we will lock out eventually but more bad will happen than good and then you have you go back to the previous regime and ed woodward etc and, and start thinking there is no change so i see no change in my opinion these guys are learning on the job and we don't need personnel that's learning on the job and that's up on the glazers for hiring these people rather than doing their due diligence and searching for the best in class for somebody that's suited to working with eric ten hag uh, and, and working with Eric Ten Hag in this new rebuild to put Manchester United in the best possible position to succeed in terms of bringing in those players that are going to fit the system and fit the current group and also rebuild that culture within the club. So that's on the ownership and of course, criticism on the board for the way they conducted in this transfer window. Of course, you got your signings, but the way you conducted yourself could have been a lot better. And that's just in the back of my mind. In terms of what CM said, yeah, good win. On to Sunday against Arsenal. Bring it on. I can't wait. Stay United Watch Along over on Twitch. Make sure you follow and look out on Twitter as well. When the notifications come through, join the community Discord. Join the 22s of Adessa upon the server. Because that's where things go down. That's where the notifications and the schedules get released. So make sure you join the link, join the Discord and do your thing. Look out on Twitter, look out on Twitch because streams are coming. Bring on Arsenal on Sunday. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you lots in a bit. Peace.